Welcome back upon for the next part of Limbus Company. In the last part, we entered the factory with Don and Heathcliff, got trapped and kidnapped by a bunch of gnomes, in which case we kind of endangered all of our sinners, because if anything ever happens to Dante, they're all doomed to die at some point. Ha ha. Ha. Otis was uh, really, really angry at us, and Faust really disappointed. We really need to watch our back for a while now, huh? <laughs> we really need to watch our back, otherwise, damn right. Tell a whole story to Virgilus, which would be devastating, but good to see that Yasang is such a good detective, he was able to find us in a flash. Before things got too sour around here, right? <laughs> okay. To find the pair, we need to find Dawn and Heathcliff. Let's see. They must have been taken to a different section of this factory. Crane must be there with them. We have to find them quickly before they get ripped apart. But then again, I guess we can still fix them, even if it is delayed by a bit. But we can't do that for Crane, so we have to be quick after all. They're still not here. Okay. It also means that I can't make use of their passives either, right? Because they're literally not in our party right now. Oh, we start with the battle right away? Against the usual bunch? Yeah, seems very good. Okay, then. Oh my god, the uppercuts him! The uppercuts him! Into the air! Through the roof! If there was no roof! Through the- Through the sun! <laughs> oh, this is just great. This is just great basalt. Really. Truly. Right, we also? Truly. That animation's great. Wait, there was no story in there. Huh? I don't really see a bookmark with the- with the icon, so... It's pretty much impossible for us to tell if this is just a battle or another story fragment. Hmm. But the title is still the same to find the pair, so I guess is this just another random fight? Or do we actually have a chance to find them now? Well, I guess it depends if we're going to see another encounter, by the way. Maybe this is once again just. Just a battle. This is actually the first time that I even get the chance to use the, the charge centipede to take from Gregor. Not have a finger about it. I've been having that ego for a while now. But so far, thanks to the passive ability of a space ego, I never really had a chance to ever make it work before. Which is a shame because the animation of that thing is actually really cool. It forms some kind of circle that charges itself up before it strikes down like a thunder. Like a clock of thunder. Or a cloud of thunder. <laughs> it's gonna be really fitting, especially since I already saw in the trailer that uh, we are about to get some kind of electric cheap ego as well. And if we combine that with the, the centipede, it's just going to fit quite nicely with each other, right? Totally. Wait a second, there was no dialogue there either? There has to be a way how we can see that. There has to be. Or maybe it's because of the title. No, no, the title doesn't really tell me anything either. I guess it's always a gamble, whether it's just an encounter or an actual story part. Oh well, from who in the gnome's pack? The factory was much larger and much more complicated than it appears at first. Who are the gnomes making these gifts for? And why? That's a really good question, Dante. I guess we're about to figure that out, huh? So, now that I had some time to look around out here, the facility appears to be a gift factory. I see. So there are factories like these that produce gifts, huh? Christmas decorations are every- oh, Sinclair. 
Ah, your PTSD, huh? With Chroma and Christmas. There's still some time until Christmas, though, right? We have the East. We have East, and this this is way too early. Sinclair looked to the ground with a sober expression. I didn't need to ask to know what he was feeling. I wonder if monster exchange gifts with each other. They didn't seem like the most hospital sorts, though. There is a possibility that they may be contracted to one of the wings in the city. Huh, do you really think that? I wanted to say, no chance, but the city and the wings that we've experienced so far were kind of unexpected. Yeah, I can see that too. Yeah, it was a non-zero chance of that being the case. That was a short story segment. They're eating up my energy relatively quickly around here. We even have enough for another stage? Probably not. But it's gonna be an issue. I might have to take a break or see how close we're going to be to the level up. There we go. Good job, Faust. I might have to change the order a little bit. We really lack Wrath. Wrath is an issue. Maybe maybe Faust needs to be on the second or maybe even the first in our order lineup around here so that she has another chance of uh, gaining that super rare Wrath dice attack. Hmm. Maybe. But I'm going to worry about that later. Nevertheless. After spending some time spamming gnomes and trashing the gift factory, we soon realized that the gifts that the conveyor belt were moving weren't your average gifts. Hmm? Is that a foot? Is that a sign with a drawing of a foot? What's that doing there? This one, it's an adornment with the depiction of an eyeball. The gifts appear to be made from the materials that do not normally go into building these items. Their shapes are of a teddy bear, oil pastel boxes, toy trains, but they have an abnormally high concentration of protein and prostrous. However, the decoration and the lights are made of proper material and must be salvaged to invade experts from the city. It's obvious. GMFH. Gifts made from human material. <sighs> War stuff made from human sacrifices? I guess the outskirt isn't so different from the city, huh? Yeah. What's really concerning is what are these gifts even for? Who in their right mind would want anything like these? Who knows? Maybe rich folks are screwed up previous perversion or something like that? Maybe that is who they are for. Uh, so... If they are making gifts out of people, Heathcliff and Don, will the gnomes turn them into gifts too? I do recall them saying something about local productive materials that we must move with haste. I have discovered a location with a higher probability of their presence, presuming that they haven't been turned into gifts yet. After a long silence, my soul spoke up. He points into one direction. There. The place says, Gifts Assembly. The Assembly Hall? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I mean, they did mention that we were high-quality products. Maybe... Maybe they're going to save us for something very special, which means they're not going to protest them just, just yet. I'm a level up a step far away, but at the very least, we have enough energy for one more. And after that, I might have to take a little break before we can continue, huh? Unless, of course, I'm going to spend some modules in order to do some observations. That is also something that I could do. But I'm going to worry about that later. Anyways. From whom the gnomes pack? The factory was much larger and much more complicated than it first appeared. Who are the gnomes making these gifts for and why? Okay, that description is still the same as before. Those two are still out. I don't like the look of that. Let's see if we can find them or is this just another battle stage? It might be just another battle stage, but we will see, right? 
So, okay, another group defeated. Seems like there's no cutscene in this one either. I really wish there was there would be any way for us to tell. I guess it has something to do with the repeating name, but um, over there, it just started out of nowhere. Hmm. Nevertheless, I have officially run out of energy. We are still quite far away from the uh, next level up. How much, how far are we away from it? I think I might be able to reach it with Flux Ovation. And I do need a lot of XP coupons. Or maybe I don't need to go for the expensive one. Let's see, how much XP does that one give us? 60 points. 60, 30, so 5 times 3, 50 modules. That isn't so bad, right? That isn't really so bad, I can totally do that. Sure, we got relatively close to the 1000 module mark. But by the time I reach the next recording session, I might be able to get to that point. Hmm, I could also use the other things. But nah. Those are my emergency supplies if I really, really need the energy right away. And I'm nowhere close to level up. Then I can always rely on them. But we're so close. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. I'm just gonna do uh, five more activations. Having more tickets is certainly going to be helpful for us, right? After all, I still need to level up a Heathcliff in the future at some point. Once I figure out which one, <laughs> right? Totally. So, okay. Level up. One point for the next one. Good job. And we got a bunch of XP points. Okay. Now, with that... We can continue, right? Christmas? Right, gnomes? We are still looking for Heathcliff after all. Gift of hatred, given shape. What? The location pointed out by Mersault was the gift assembly line. The side of them assembling gifts with their material that they've kept them was shocking. And the two sinners were ser uh, we were searching for we're also about to be turned into gift themselves, so they are here! And they could technically join our battle as well, but I really saw you two. You two don't have any Kurokuma IDs, right? Sadly. Sadly, you guys don't have that. Okay, let us go! I think I'm hearing some odd noise from in there. <laughs> I read a high-pitched SOS. It's always a good indicator of wonderful happenings. Can you not giggle about the sound of screamings, please? I am familiar with this tone. The scribble range of the screaming is an exact match with Don. Wait, we have yet to conduct a threat assessment of the combat area. The area appears to be in closed off space, which means... Otis, were Heathcliff with us, he would have said as such. Said what? I think I know. How bloody frustrating! Quit whining, pick up your tools, and get cracking! Don't overthink this! There are people in there who need our help. Is that a dog? Oh, that's adorable. But this is also made of... Uh, never mind! What am I saying? <laughs> get in there and save them! <laughs> that was pretty close. <laughs> Ishmael soon blasted the door open with a powerful kick. Meanwhile... Oh, where the bloody hell are we? And why am I tied up? And what even is this? There are so many of them. I regretfully say to thee that we are quite screwed. For soon we are fated to become toys in that hydraulic press. It appears that when the time comes, I shall be turned into a roly-poly toy myself. That rises with every fall. Ugh. Oi, shut your trap and do something about this! We've got to get out of these binds! So Heathcliff, I apologize profusely. This is true that there was an, a tiny bit of selfishness within me that I wished to procure the red sex cosplay set for myself. Uh, however, 
It was not the lie that I wished to find thee an impeccable outfit. You little shit. I knew this was going to happen once I'm out of this bind aisle. <laughs> At least thou shalt become an elaborate pocket watch. <laughs> Damn clocks again. I think they're going to turn me into a box of color pencil. Oh, 24 vibrant natural color. Also it says, oh no. We have not seen living raw materials in a while, oh me. But they're a bit loud, oh me. Can you see if my turns are bleeding, oh me? Oh me, the more they scream, the happier our recipients will be, oh me. Oh me, oh me. Then let's get cutting, oh me. Boom. Heathcliff, done! Oh, what a relief, you're still alive! And they've not turned you into any gifts yet! <whistles> Quite cozy in here. Everyone! How? We're here for you, Heathcliff! Just give us one moment! Clock it! Damn it, I didn't think I'd ever be this glad to see a muck! <laughs> Looks like we got here in the nick of time. Heathcliff was about to be shoved into the gift making. Hydraulic machine press. I have you in your straps. The scent. Look, I'm not the type to wear my heart on my sleeves, but after you're not saving from getting turned into a pocket watch, I have to say it. Fe you're an absolute idiot! You two have one job to remain by the executive manager's side, yet you leave yourself to be captured like this! Ah, uh, you know what? Nah, forget it. <laughs> Right, get a hold of yourself, you two! Manager, what now? Well, we've got to trash this place. Come on, get ready to wear your identities! This is probably going to be more than two waves, huh? After all, this entire room is filled with gnomes! I can even see it in the background. Never mind, it's still only two waves. Are they not going to join us? Or are they just too busy with the presents? I mean, I guess they have to prepare millions of billions of gifts for the whole world. And then again, how many people are even in the city? Are there other cities? Questions for later, right? Questions for later. First and foremost, we have to take care of a couple of gnomes. There we go! Not so bad. Not so bad. So I'm just going to expect that there's... There's a cutscene! I was about to say that the next combat phase is probably going to be just a battle again. But maybe not. What is? After we defeated the hordes of gnomes, Don and Heathcliff fell to their knees before everyone. I also kneeled down, feeling like I should be down there with them after all. We all went along with Don plan. But Otis tightly pulled me up to the side. Huh? Wait, 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 but I feel bad for those two and we, we were all in this. I'm really commenced, Lady Otis. You absolute buffoons. How do you even think that this was going to turn out okay? Are you even aware of the risks the executive manager took to get here? How worried they were about you too? Well, actually, Clockhead was in on it from the st- uh, Whoa! Silence! Do not refer to the executive managers with such derogative language, insolent fool! Uh, that was my fault! My fault! My mother used to score me like this in my youth. Otis did not seem to slow down at all with her stern scolding. And the pair fell completely silent, their heads hung low. I decided to wander away from the scene. The this guilty conscience was just too much for me to bear. Is, uh, Crayon doing okay? Yes, she merely lost her consciousness from expressed psychological shock. How did you find yourself at a place such as this? You are a human, right? Are we really in the outskirts? Crayon initially appeared somewhat taken aback from the deluge of questions, but she soon began to open up. So, you really are from the city. I am from Cloud Town. It's a village on the north side of the outskirts. Cloud Town? Are there a lot of monsters like those gnomes out there? That, you know, 
can speak. Yeah, there are many more monsters out there, other than the gnomes. I've seen a few of them myself, but the village elder told me about the rest. Our village was built to keep the monsters out, to keep us safe. If this didn't happen, we'll all be preparing dinner back at the village by now. So they raided your village. Yeah, and they attacked us when the hunters were gone, so... Must have watched you guys for a very long time to know when the hunters are on the ground. We normally don't get raided by them around this time of the year. So I thought we were safe, but they suddenly attacked us. Rushing in on their slides and... Some of us tried to fight, but we didn't stand a chance. And everyone that they killed got chuffed into the sacks on their sledge. I passed out from fright and they thought that I was dead, too. I got chuffed into the sack like the rest of the villagers. Oh, we forced you to talk about something that couldn't have been easy to go through. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Can I ask things too? Anything. Is it right that crane box in the cities have 48 different colors? And that they have gold and sil uh, silver colored cranes too? Uh, probably. And they are just people in the city, right? No monster like the gnomes that try to kill us, right? Uh, it's kind of hard to answer that, actually. Sometimes I would climb a high hill to look at the city. I always saw pretty colorful lights from up there. So colorful that I e don't even have enough colors in my crane box to draw them all. I wish I could live in the city. If I lived there, I would never have to worry about getting attacked by monsters. I could live happily with all my neighbors. <sighs> ah, about that. You've really never been to the city, huh? S.S.E. Um, I'm sorry? Same story everywhere. It doesn't matter where you are. Death always stalks us. Whoa, that was so cool! Can you say that again? Ryosha has a new fan, I see. Wait, that was cool? Oh, um, did you guys see anyone else nearby by chance? I don't think we ran into any other humans out here. No, but... He has to be here to save us. And who do you mean? The best hunter of Cloud Town. If he was at the village, the gnomes wouldn't have... It appears that in the outskirts there are hunters who are specialized in hunting monsters, akin to whales of the Great Lake, that is. But wait, so if they're kidnapping and killing humans for these gifts, who are these gifts for? Who the... Santa? Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho! Of course, the gifts are for the poor and kind neighbors who do not cry. Executive manager, retreat! He is really big. I don't know when it happened, but a large shadow was looming over us. What is that thing? I am Santata, bringer of gifts to our neighbors. Ho, 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 ho. The Gopharian giant, garbed in red, carried a massive gift sack on his shoulder. It was definitely not a human. Yeah, it's that kid. He's the boss. No, oh, the crimson garb. This is the crimson garb that I spoke of. The pair immediately jumped up from their knees and began shouting in unison. That's the red sex outfit. Oi, then he's already... No. Not a reindeer man, too! Shut it! Cut to use the shadow for once, okay? After silencing the pair with a short, stern command, Otis approached me and spoke in a low voice. Executive manager, since it appeared to be of an intelligent species, I will attempt to parley with it. But we best prepare for battle in case the talk falls through. Right, that's a good idea. What do you mean by neighbors? Wings? Clients from the city? Ho 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 ho! But we are denied entry to the city, are we not? Is that a big lump of meat, a gnome too? I happen to overhear the gnomes during our time in captivity. They call their master Bear, bear Giant or something like that, which I believe is not a gnome. A giant? 
really are all kinds of monsters out here, huh? Dante, that's not an abnormality, is it? No, that's not an abnormality or a distortion. I would say it's closer to a whale. Ho ho! Do you learn for gifts too? Yet your kind already owns all there is to own. We and our neighbors in the outskirts wish so dearly for that very day. The one day we are allowed joy and comfort in human gifts. I see. So you reproduce toys out of human and gift them to those who harbor hatred for humans? Out of pure goodness of your heart? Here, where all those who have been marginalized and exiled by humans gather in Valno, we pour our infinite hatred and care into packaging these gifts. Ho, 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 ho. Infinite hatred? Are you sure that you're not an abnormal? Huh. Quite a verbose way of saying that I refuse to negotiate. Ho, 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 ho. Why don't you come here and join us? Become joy to those who need it. Yeah. He's not gonna... He's not gonna talk to us. We're probably about to fight that guy, huh? Right away? I guess not. Oh my god! Faust! You're usually always on the slow side, but you did so much damage today! Ha 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 ha! The gift-giving giant. Yeah, we're about to face off against that guy, huh? <laughs> he's already... He's not even here! He's even right, he's right to the right side of this place. Okay then, our negotiation attempts with the bear the giant Satatana predictably fell through. We have no choice but to feed him here. Well, that's gonna be fun. Okay, one's ready. Let's see what he got. He's probably going to rely on poise as well with a tech boost. Just as the little gnomes, probably. But we will see. I guess first and foremost, we have to get through a couple of those little guys. Oh. Oh, this is a focus encounter. Interesting. So, okay. Turn 8, we have two turns in order to defeat this guy with 600 health. Okay, let's see what do we have. We have charge, bind, and poise. Uh, poise is not going to be so bad. To charge my cost with issues. That's just an 8, no. 4, 4, 4, so 12. Charge count plus 2. More poise. A lot of poise. And a lot of count as well. Here's a gift. If the target has bind, and if this unit has a faster speed, gain clash power equal to speed difference. If it hits. We're going to lose SP, he gets even more poise and paralysis. Okay, we have to avoid that. However we can. Can't really see any of his passives yet. What's this? Gain 3 poise every turn. Turn ends. Heal 3 SP for every attack skill that dealt damage. I'll gift wrap you. You're already enraged? Okay. Okay, I would say some of our attacks are going to go towards the sack. I'm not entirely sure if we should break it, but it only has like 100 health. So that should do a lot of damage. We might be even we might even be able to break it in this turn, but we'll see about it. I'm pretty sure if we break a sack, it's not going to calm him down. But if it did, that would be nice. That would be really, really nice. Okay, let's see. How much damage is that going to do? Not a lot, but we were able to apply some sinking against them. I didn't really have the necessary speed to counter all of its attack dices, but that's fine. 11. Good hit. Another good hit. I thought I would be able to apply some bleed on him, but I don't really see any ailments against him. Ah, now I see it. Okay, seven, seven counts. That's really good. What's this? He's going to gain two attack power up. The attacks seem to be all the same. And the sack is almost staggered. Okay. Okay, I would say a couple of our attacks are going towards the 
attack again. We might be able to break it in this turn, or at the very least, we will be able to stagger it in case it's going to go for an attack next turn. 101 defense! Did I just see that right? 101! What even is this? <laughs> what even was that? That is a bit ridiculous. A little bit ridiculous, don't you think? Send ta 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 Okay. Well, at the very least, we're going to apply some bleed effect. Okay, that's going to be handy. And a little bit of bleed count as well. So, let's see. Am I going to get a stack on the sack? Well, not quite, but really, really close. Under my mind, I did get a stagger. But why? It's because of this. The HP is completely depleted. Stagger next turn. I guess we were able to break through the defense die, which is 80 plus 20. <laughs> it's, that's certainly a very bulky guy, huh? Really, really bulky. Let's go for the strong moves. This one, this one for our eager resources and our charge. But technically speaking, I could have also went for the chains on my muscle so that we can debuff him for the next turn. But seeing how close he's going to be to stagger range in general, I don't think it's going to be that necessary. And I prefer for my muscle to do some damage in the next turn as well. Actually speaking, we already went through the stagger bar. This might not be so good. What's this? Ho ho ho, turn end, gain poise. Expires at zero charge. But it doesn't have charge. But it's glittery now. Why are you... Why do you have a glitter effect? A 10 charge, gain ho ho ho. At 30% HP. Ho ho ho. Lose all charge when it's unit staggered. I guess that's why he lost all of his charges, and he's still going to gain more poises. Or rather, he loses a poise when hit by an attack skill. Interesting. It won't be enough to break it. What is it? 51, 27. Actually speaking, we're going to break it in the next turn. That's good, hopefully. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the chicken man that we already fought before. But once we took care of his bucket, he got really, really angry. But he also didn't really summon any more allies after that, so maybe... If we break the sack, it's going to be a good thing as well? Maybe? We'll see, right? We will see. Nevertheless, he's all the way down to 11. I don't think we even have a chance to break it at all. Nah, he already died. Oh well. It happens, right? It happens. Okay, now that you've been defeated, do we have a chance to talk now, huh? Have you calmed down a little, Satata? <laughs> Humans, I'll separate the flesh from your bones! No, you won't. There's only one guy in this world who can claim our bones, right? Satata's guts suddenly begin to expand. All of you, hold your breath! Suddenly, a large figure leaps out of the dark and slams what looks like a stake into the tartan's guts. Whoa, this is a, sm a smell most foul. I think I'm about to pass out. A scent of potently feather refuse lingers and something has dropped to the floor where the others get profusely. Clearly, this was a rather painful experience for all. Good that we don't have a nose, huh? <laughs> this gas does not appear to be toxic. However, its scent seems to inspire an extreme level of discomfort in people. So, you've defeated the Northern Giant. Yet you don't seem to know the proper procedure for what to do afterwards. Are you a hunter from the city? Wait, the proper procedure? Immediately before death, a Northern Giant's body fills with noxious gas before expanding into a rain of acids. The man who stakes certain scuts explained as he approached us. 
You have to puncture a hole in its guts to let out the gas before its internal organs condense into an acid fluid, allowing it to cause a chain reaction could complicate things. Who the hell is that guy? And and wait a second, now that I think about it. Oh no! I failed my X mission! No! I took too long! <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna refight that guy in a second, but still. Who the heck was that? And what was that about? Do you mean that there are more of those guys? Are there more factories like that? There might be. Wait, there's no mini dungeon? A journey's end. Huh? We defeated Satata, but his body ex begins to expand as though it was about to explode. That is when we heard a sudden, unfamiliar voice from somewhere. Okay then. Ah, oh, the stench won't come off. Who is that now? Mr. Domino! Crayon, who had been holding her breath with her fingers over her nostril, ran up to a large man and hugged him. At least you're safe, Crayon. That's good. <coughs> After stumbling for a moment, due to the stench most likely, Otis briefly grasped for air before approaching Domino. Hey, you! Identify yourself! Name's Domino. I'm a monster hunter from Cloud Town. I don't suppose I can call it a town anymore, now that it is just me and Crayon that's left. Relax, I won't even think of hurting any of you. So, you're the hunter that the girl mentioned. Otis relaxed upon Domino's confirmation. She leaned on the wall and looked to the floor in relief. Normally, around this time of years, this monster would have gone further north to a different village. So I was on an expedition to help them out. Looks like they decided to switch things up this time around. When I returned, they've already finished their raid on our village and left. Damn it. They used to be predictable. Attacking only right before Christmas. Do these tragedies happen often around here? Though I can't speak for the city, I can say that this is a common occasion in the outskirt. It's a hellish place to live, if you can even call this living. Survival alone is a miracle out here. Are there a lot of more places out here like this? Like this mockery of a gift factory? No. Can't say that I've seen a factory like this anywhere else, but I can tell you one thing. Compared to some worst things that could have happened, this tragedy was nothing. That's the natural order of things in the outskirts. I do wonder sometimes. If we were in the city, no matter how bad it gets in there, it must still be better than living this hell. Hmm. It was no easy contemplation to answer. The outskirt must be a hellish place to live, if what he's told me is anything to go by. But the city they admire so much isn't such a warm place itself, from what I've seen in my journey so far at least. Aha! Then accompany us back to the city! We're on our... Dawn stopped herself realizing that every other sinner was giving her a look of disapproval. Thank you for your kind words, at least. I wish it were that easy. If I could at least let this child enter the city somehow. Just like that. But the city has no place to spare for this child. Not even a small corner for it. Even if you were to somehow make it past the city's wall, there are countless varieties of paperwork and procedures you must overcome before you can even live the kind of life you desire. <laughs> And what would people like us even do with such paperwork? And where would we find them out here? We've not studied or worked to find a, a job in the city, as a youth of our village do. Mister! Hmm. There was an uncomfortable silence. Domino cleared his throat and continued. I must still extend my gratitude for keeping the girls safe until my arrival. I know a good way too. <coughs> To extend your gratitude, maybe you can extend us a nice pouch of shiny and shangling bags of. Rodion's eyes were twinkling 
The lingering stench made it difficult for her to speak, but she was determined to make her point. Mm, something shiny and shangly. Sure, maybe I can give you a tour of some of my antiques item that I kept at home. Precious item salvaged from the locomotive tracks of the outskirt. Not something you will see every day in the city, I'm sure. Locomotive at the outskirt? Items from the outskirt? That to alone could be worth much more than just pure cash. Faust, there's still a decent chance that the door we've entered through might just shut behind us, right? Indeed. In fact, it is unclear whether the door is still open. I recommend a quick return to the bus, now that our two primary objectives have been secured. So she says. If you would permit me to speak my mind, Executive Manager. Even if this is not the Great Lake, the outskirt is an extremely peril place. This curiosity cannot be a reason for us to risk getting stranded in this environment. Looks like you've got to hurry back. Well then, catch. Domino tossed a carved wooden doll in my direction. It does not appear to be anything dangerous. Let us inspect it further after we return. We must stay any longer than we have to. Yeah, good idea. Thanks for the gift, though! Some sinners has passed out and had to be carried by others. Most could not stop gagging at the stench, but we still made our way back to the door. The door that remained open! We made it back to the safety of the Mephistolus. But is it truly safe? Because on the other side, we still have Virgilus. <laughs> Some time later. Oh, Sharon! Oh, stinky! Sharon, evacuate! Evacuate! Sharon quickly made her escape to the deck. <sighs> Maybe we should go back to the outskirt, guys! Yeah! That might be a good idea! How about we turn around right now? She just greets us in the cabin with a terrifying gaze. Well, looks like everyone had quite adventure, huh? Covered in blood and guts, and with a disgusting stench to boot. Oh, ah, this is... Manager, I can't hear you anyways. So just reply to my query with a nod or a shake. Your reply better match up with my expectations, of course. <laughs> I have but one question. Was it you who made the call? I hesitate for a moment before nodding affirmatively. I might get reprimanded or maybe has worse things in mind for me, but... It was I who decided to go along with their plan. This would not have happened without my authority. Even though she already went there alone, but still. Good. Then my questions is over. Eh? I will leave it to you to deal with this mess. You may rest afterwards. And please, do something about this foul stench. Well then. Wait, really? He just... He just leaves like that? He didn't even scold me? Or us? With that, Virch just disappears into the back door once again. That was unexpected. Uh, I thought my time had finally come and the gaze and be glad. The best consolation is a consolation not out, indeed. <laughs> Alas, behold, one and all. What is that? I don't know when she had the time to pick it all in that chaos, but Don managed to haul a huge sack of gifts back to, Me to Mephistopheles. You picked that up from all that mess? I have laid claim upon the evil gnome's trinket. Now that's some real commitment. What's all that for? Ah, uh, art thou truly unaware of my intention? This is for adorning our ship with Christmas decoration. Wait, now? But we are still like three months away from Christmas. Well, agreed, let's not risk peeling old wounds. To lower the moral of our company is... Oh, it's okay. It's been getting better with time. Little by little. Yeah, we can all grow beyond it. Eventually, at least. Mm hmm? Marvelous! 
Then this appears to be an occasion most fitting for a party, then? What say you? Don't tell me you went through all that trouble for some party decorations. According to Dante's explanation, this incident was spurred on by Heathcliff's need for an outfit. Heathcliff has been silently brooding on the seat with his face buried in his palms, out of shame, most likely. Ahem, <coughs> really, really, yet that very custom we had sought was worn by none other than the monstrous giants, so I don't suppose it would fit Sir Heathcliff anyhow. Forget it. It wasn't the kind of look that I was going for anyways. What did I say, Heat? We'll help you out as soon as we land, okay? The outfit's one thing. Yeah, but, uh... Oh. You're speaking of the portrait we're sailing past. The portrait on which the hair salon that printed those hair coupons conduct their business, right? The coupons could not be used, as the portrait was not on our sharded route. Leave it to me to style your hair. I've done my sister's and younger siblings' hair pretty often. We don't know how long we'll be floating on this damn lake for anyways. And besides... I don't even know how to dress myself properly. I was going to attempt the trial and error method, which never usually works, if you really need it. Okay, but can you at least tell us what it is that Virch just gave you? Just so that we know what exactly you're so anxious about? Heh, <laughs> sort it. After a deep, heavy sigh, Heathcliff produced... A letter? So that's the something Virch just gave you, huh? Oh, I remember! My family used this envelope before. It's made from a very expensive paper, made only in limited quantities at the time. It's quite a luxurious, luxurious envelope. Can we read it, Heath? Sure. It's nothing impressive. Then, Dante, why don't you read it out loud for the rest of us? Sure. Rhodia handed me the letter. It was written in a beautiful series of curvous handwriting drawn to an almost calligraphic perfection. I began reading. From Wuthering Heights, we coordinate extend to our honored guest an invitation to the... Okay. Uh, what's this here? Somebody colored over this part of the letter. Well, I keep reading. Revenue, Wuthering High, Teacup Nest. Should you accept our invitation, Please convey at the designated location by 4 in the afternoon on the 24th with this letter on your person. Please honor this occasion with your presence. With great respect, Nelly. Ah, and down there is a postscript. It's written in a different handwriting from the rest of the letter. P.S. You have to be there, Heat. I'll be waiting. Kefi. We had no way to tell what kind of occasion it was on account of being colored over, but did Heathcliff do that, or was that did that happen before? Did she color it? Did Katie color it? Huh. Clearly, the rest of the letter's content had stroked the fires of passion in Heathcliff's heart once again. It's Katie, after all. So, you gotta look fashionable and classy for this Katie person, right? Well, yeah, but there's more to it than, uh... Shh! Quiet now. Now I can clearly see why you were so patient, Heat! Oh my god, it's a love story! Huh? Why are you looking at me like that for? Oh! <laughs> I leave it up to you to style this hair, Master Hairdresser Hong Lu! Mm-hmm. I wouldn't call myself a master. I Wait! Where are you taking me? Does what, what in the bloody hell is this crip? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Rodion got quite the grip strength, huh? <laughs> you fawn free yourself from her anytime soon. The two sinners practically hauled Heathcliff by his arms, disappeared into the back door. Now Heathcliff's fate was sealed. To be a mannequin to now motivated and unbearably bored Rodion's various experimentations. I can hang this trinket here and... Hmm. Dawn began humming a song. A carol, perhaps, as she placed various trinkets around the bus. Well, at the very least, she has fun. And I decided to go back to the deck for some air. I leaned on the rail and dug through my pockets. 
The wooden doll, Domino, the hunter gave me, just as we hurriedly left. I held it and felt its texture under my finger. My eyes looked into the distance towards where the outskirt lies. I thought for a moment about the gnomes, the giant and the thing Domino told me. I suppose there are people with stories in the outskirts too. Stories different from those of the city. Faust approached from behind and stood next to me. I wasn't sure how much of what I said she heard. Follow the star stunter. Star by star. Then you will find one day learn. So for now, follow the closest star that shines before your eyes. Yeah. I have to focus on the stories of the cities for now. And then expand our horizon. I don't even know who I really am after all. But it seems like the sinners are kind of busy. Joyce laughed and frustrated all was echoes out of the cabin. They must have finished dressing up Heathcliff. Why don't we go and take a look at how Heathcliff is doing first? You make a rather tempting offer, Dante. The added color to the bus interior warms my heart a little. And with that, Christmas is over. What, what was that? What, what was that exclamation mark? But again, with that, Christmas is over, and we're heading over to Kim. T Corp with Kim. Second for Porgus Night. Back to the bus. Oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. But sadly, we have to save that for the next week. I hope you guys had fun with today's part, and see you in the next one. Until then, bye bye!